wonderful world of Disney. Joker, the amiable ocelot. Now your host, Walt Disney. You know, if a time ever comes when you see spots in front of your eyes and they growl, look a little closer. It just might turn out to be an ocelot, like this fella here. You know, two or three hundred years ago, nobody ever heard of an ocelot, except the Indians in South and Central America. It was the Aztecs that gave him his name. And by the way, they called him uh, Ocelotl. <laughs> now today, the Ocelot, or Ocelotl, is becoming a popular pet. And here you can see why. He's just about the most amiable and easy to tame member of the whole wild feline family. So it looks like this oversized house cat <laughs> might have quite a future as a friend of man. On this program, though, we're going to bring you the story of a wilderness-born ocelot and his friend, a man named Jim Benton. Now, Jim Benton had a few problems, and one of them was the ocelot. Of course, <laughs> the ocelot had some problems, too, and one of them was Jim Benton. But a registered nurse named Nancy Conroy made a diagnosis and prescribed a remedy, and everybody came out ahead. As a matter of fact, it looks like even I'm coming out ahead of the story, that is. It's called Joker, the Amiable Ocelot. And getting back to the beginning now, we're first going to meet Joker's father. He's somewhere out in the desert and on the prowl. And being the head of a family, of course, he has a few problems too. Isn't that right? Along the southwest border of the United States, lies a land of sun-washed space and silence, a realm where the stern rule of the desert is challenged only by the thin blue line of a wandering river. All living things are drawn to the river's edge by the need for water, and here too, in the endless search for food, comes the hunter. On this particular morning, the hunter was a male ocelot, He'd spent a long night in a fruitless search for game. Now, in these early morning hours, he was making one last check of all the watering places, but with no success. The ocelot is known by a variety of names. Felis pardalis, leopard cat, tigrillo. He's native to Central America and Mexico, but he also ranges over the border and into the United States. Generally speaking, an ocelot prefers to hunt under cover of darkness, but this natural night worker had to do a little sunlighting these days. It seems it recently acquired additional obligations. Down there in that old family sedan was a brand new family. Ocelots, kitten raising is a cooperative project. Keeping the family well fed was father's chore. But this time he was checking in without the groceries. He knew there'd be music to face and it wouldn't be home sweet home. He tried to tell her that hunting was tough all over. She wasn't buying that. Well, she did have a point. Maybe he should go out and do some more hunting. Now, it so happened there was another hunter in the neighborhood that day. But disturbing the wildlife was not part of his plan. To the mother cat, though, any unfamiliar sound meant danger. She was ready to move her family in a moment. The man 
friend's name was Jim Benton. To him, the old car was something of a prize. Combing the desert for odd bits of salvage was part of his business. Jim Benton had been born with a limp, but his handicap was more mental than physical. For Jim had never really learned to live with it. It had made him a loner and a drifter most of his life. With the danger closing in, it was time to be moving out. Kitten number one got the idea right away and followed in mother's footsteps. Number two decided to take the shortcut. It turned out to be a twisted trail with a dead end. discovered she was short one kitten, she took emergency measures. She'd hide this youngster in the nearest underbrush, then go back for brother. But it was already too late. A thoughtful nature has given every wilderness mother a short memory the ocelot's sense of loss would quickly fade away. For the kitten, though, this tangle of trouble was just the beginning. He was on his own now, heading for big adventure. And he hadn't even left the den yet. The place where Jim had set up shop was about as far out and as high up as he could get. Of course, it was called the Summit Garage. His business was mostly used car parts and scrap metal. But he also pumped gasoline, did little repair work, sold cactus, odd rocks, twisted roots, and anything else he could glean from the desert. The summit wasn't any gold mine, but it was self-sufficient and remote. And so was Jim Benton. For Jim, there was to be a change, though. It was in the works right now. kitten had been shaken clear out of his shackles. Now he just couldn't wait to haul out of the old homestead and get down to the business of finding his family. Jim's jungle of junk looked like a wonderful place to explore. First, though, maybe he'd better check in with Mother. Trouble was, he didn't know which way to turn. But it really didn't make any difference. He was lost in all directions. this nightmare maze, a sight that gladdened his little kitten heart. It was only Duchess, Jim's calico cat, but over there was home and hearthside for one bewildered baby. The new quarters seemed small, and it looked like Mom had lost a little weight. Still, he was in no mood to be critical. 
Well, he'd certainly come to the right place. Duchess was a compulsive mother. To her, a kitten was a kitten, and size was completely unimportant. Seems he'd hit the lunch hour right on the button. Now that was chow call for a whole passel of rather peculiar pets. A Kawadi Monday, a rabbit, and a kit fox named Pedro. Nosy, the Kawadi, had just wandered in one day and never left. Leadfoot here and Pedro were hit and run victims that Jim had picked up along the highway and nursed back to health. The queen of the junkyard was Duchess. Jim knew she had her own feeding problems right now, and he came within an inch of finding out just how really big one of them was. You get the long whiskers, huh? Yeah. And what a pink nose. All right, back you go to mommy. It was several days later, when Jim was busy cutting up the old car, the Duchess arranged a surprise coming out party. <laughs> I'll be. Duchess, you sure got a joker in this thing. And so the little oddball of fur was named Joker. Where'd you come from, huh? Of course, Jim didn't know he was holding the key to a whole new future. It was just around the corner. Morning. Hi. You filling up the regular plate? Yes, ma'am. Oh, look at the little kitty. Oh, can I hold it? Sure. Oh, isn't he cute? My goodness, he's so cute. My goodness, look at those eyes. So what kind is it, a calico? No, I don't think so. I found out back with my cat, Duchess. But I don't think it's one of hers. Oh, really? Where do you suppose he came from? I don't know. My goodness, he's so cute. Cute little guy. Such a ferocious tiger. Tiger? Yeah, maybe that's what he is. What? Tiger cat, a uh, ocelot. Saw one down by the river. Could be its mother. How oh, that little one got here beats me. By the way, I'm Nancy Conroy. Jim Benton. I'm a visiting nurse for the county health department. We're setting up a new clinic in the valley. Oh? So, if you have any medical problems, you or your family... No yeah. family and no medical problems. Well, good. I'm glad that's nothing serious. Your leg? No, ma'am. It's just permanent. Can I check your tires? All right, please. Say, do you suppose he's hungry? Could be. Are you hungry, huh? Come on. The could I have you. Could I have? Look what I have here. Huh? Instant formula. Good for baby Orpies, huh? Well, that's how it started. An orphan ocelot, a friendly outgoing girl, a lonely indrawn man, and one brief conference at the summit. There would be others. <laughs> For a young, trouble-prone ocelot, life in a scrap-iron wilderness was just about ideal. 
Here, the good neighbor policy prevailed among animals that would have been natural enemies in the wilderness. Eventually, there came a time when the old familiar byways seemed to have shrunk a little. Joker's increasing size created a few extra jitters in his circle of acquaintances. It was getting harder now to work up a game of chase and tussle. Like any fox, Pedro was born nervous. And a romp with Joker wasn't exactly a tranquilizer, even if he was an amiable ocelot. So most of Joker's best times now were with his best friend. Today, Jim was re-rebuilding a rebuilt car, and Joker was looking high and low for fun. And with Joker, fun was almost a case of assault and battery. Joker! You... Oh, God. What are you doing? Go on! What are you doing down there? Give that guy a chance anyway. Come on! You wanna play, huh? You wanna play? You wanna get rough? All right, come on. Come on. Come on. You know, you're just getting too rambunctious for your age. Yeah. You get a whole junkyard full of friends. Go play with them. Go on. By now, Duchess wanted no part of Joker. More and more these days, Jim looked forward to hearing that particular horn. But he still wouldn't admit that Nancy was anything more than a steady customer. Hi. Morning. Why don't you let me fix that rattle? It's just a loose tail pipe. Hey, cut that out. What was that all about? Who knows? They've been chasing each other around all morning. <laughs> Joker doesn't know his own strength. Oh, speaking of Mr. Joker, present, me, to you. It's a wildlife book. Ocelot. Huh. I'll be dying. <laughs> I thought you might like a picture of your star of order. Thanks, Nancy, but you shouldn't spend your hard-earned money on me. Let me pay you for it. Oh, don't be silly. Wow. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Joker, you crazy cat. Stop that, Joker. <laughs> what are you trying to do, bite my leg off? You want to see your picture? Huh? Look at that. <laughs> sure does look like Joker. Practically his twin. Oh, Jim, this Saturday night we're having a benefit dance to open our new clinic. I want you to come. Are you kidding? Oh, Jim, for Pete's sake, don't be like that. I've tried to Look, keep... Look, you want some gas? All right, fill it up. Sometime, somehow, this registered nurse was going to find a cure for what really ailed Jim Benton. Meantime, Joker was working on his own educational program. It was on the weekends that Jim did his rock hounding and desert scrounging. And when Joker was full grown, Jim invited him to join the expeditions. It was on these trips that Jim learned some surprising things about ocelots. For instance, Joker, unlike most cats, just plain reveled in the river. typical of an ocelot. And once Jim discovered that, they made many visits to the old swimming hole. And so a deepening affection developed between the man and the cat. Just when things were looking all bright and cheery, though, Jim's happy relationship with Joker was about to suffer a compound fracture. It was a beautiful moonlight night in the junkyard, and Joker was just itching for action. So he dropped by the Bureau of Recreation and rousted out an old playmate. Well, this was a night for sheer madness. And no time for a tame game. It would be table stakes, the sky the limit, with coates and jokers wild. 
Mostly, the garage was locked up and out of bounds, but it happened to be open tonight. That meant the lid was off in a palace of pleasure. sure there was plenty of suds on tap. But it was Joker that really started things swinging. was a sort of security symbol, but the Kuwaiti was on the verge of adjusting that. Joker was either a mighty lucky cat, or maybe he just had a natural bent for driving. After all, he was born in a car. way to a rendezvous, and it didn't allow too much time for action, but it was enough. Joker, get out of there! after the night before, that circumstance delivered the final blow. Seems to be the trouble. Been heating up. Think it's a fan belt. Check it, will you? Yes, sir. Doesn't seem to be the bell. Could have a leak in the radiator. Yeah, maybe it just needs water. And the Duke was a dog with a purpose. He was a one boxer committee committed to the abolition of cats.
Joker had never seen a dog before, but he knew that Duchess was in danger. wasn't much choice. Joker would have to be kept in check from now on. Poor Joker. Come here, Joker. Come here. What's the matter, old tiger? Your feelings hurt. By now, Nancy was pretty much concerned with everything that happened at the service station. And she felt that Joker was as much her problem as Jim's. Jim, is, is he going to have to be chained up like this all the time? Well, I can't trust him anymore. Last night he tore the place apart. This morning it was a customer's dog. Tomorrow might be somebody's kid. Oh, you don't think Joker would hurt a child, do you? It's a chance I can't take. Have you ever thought of turning him loose? He wouldn't know what to do out there. He's learned to play with the same animals that he'd have to kill for food. Jim, everyone has a handicap of one kind or another. You have to learn to live with yours, but, but Joker could overcome his. I know he could. Give him that chance. Let him take his natural place in his own world. Okay. You've made your point, Nancy. Both ways. It was the following weekend that Joker went for his last ride in Jim's truck. For Jim and Nancy, it was a pretty grim and silent trip. They knew that when it was over, there'd be a lingering sense of loss for a long time to come. Jim figured Joker had a better chance of finding food along the river's edge. And since this was the cat's favorite swimming hole, maybe he wouldn't feel quite so lonesome here. It was all well planned and practical, and probably for the best. But it was the hardest thing Jim had ever had to do. didn't understand at all. By habit, he tried to follow wherever Jim went. But this time, it was hopeless. Then Joker seemed to sense that something very important in his life had come to an end. Now that he was in his natural element, it's not really surprising that Joker's sense of rejection was soon overcome by curiosity. At this point, chasing a lizard was just for fun. But when hunger brought the need, the game was bound to change.
Meanwhile, though, Joker spent the rest of the day getting acquainted with some of the natives around these parts. In this case, an armadillo. He just couldn't make heads or tails out of this fellow. the armadillo was a pretty dull playmate anyway. No use pursuing this any further. Now in the wild, an ocelot can easily go as long as a week without needing food. And that's just about what Joker did. Then before he ever learned to get along by himself, Joker came upon something he couldn't get along without. It was just another ocelot, and a more or less standard model at that. Still in Joker's eyes, this young female was the most beautiful sight in the whole wide world. The South American Indians call the ocelot Chibi Guatsu, or Chibi for short. Well, this Chibi for short was long on feminine wiles. Now that she had him hooked, she ignored him. Joker turned out to be a persistent, if not a polished suitor. When Chibi tried to play it extra cool, he bent her ear with sweet nothings. And finally, her heart melted. That's how it was that Chibi, the female, led the way far into the high country and to her own home territory. Here, during long weeks of learning, Chibi taught Joker the wilderness skills of hunting. And here, too, nature imparted her own special, timeless knowledge to the pair of young ocelots. Then there came a day when Chibi moved higher into the rim rocks on a different kind of hunt and found just what she was looking for, a den. It was high and dry, had rounded, easy to clean corners, limited access too. But here at the door of the new nursery, an old togetherness ended. Well, that's a fact of ocelot life, and Joker accepted it. He'd just moved to temporary bachelor quarters. Instinctively, he selected a high point as a lookout post. Down below in the den, family history had repeated itself. For about eight weeks now, this had been home for one set of identical twins. Joker had learned his responsibilities, and generally he kept his family well fed. Up till now, that is. After nearly two months of hunting in one area, game was not only scarce and skittery, but downright hard to come up with. Like most cats, an ocelot can turn on a lot of speed for a little while, but he almost always gets the short end of a long haul, and that was the pattern on this particular day. Back in the den, the dinner hour rolled around, and there was Joker right on time. Trouble was, he brought home a tale of woe and not one bite of food. That night, Chibi went hunting on her own. She was wider ranging than her mate and less inhibited. Being born to the wild, she knew about things he didn't. For instance, the lighted buildings of a ranch usually contained trouble. But a dark building quite often contained chickens.
this emergency, Chibi was willing to dare the danger of the lights for the rewards of the dark. a trick and still she lost the game. What's going on out there? Some kind of cat. Ocelot mate. Got one of the chickens. Did you wing him? Never had a chance. You want me to go after him? Too dark. We'll borrow a couple of Charlie's dogs in the morning. Look at him. Maybe Joker's family providing had hit a low point, but he was still tops as a lookout. And next morning, it paid off. True to his word, the rancher was out to get himself a cat and he had a sharp eye for a likely spot. I bet that cat's right up there in the rim rock. Turn off the dogs and we'll go up there and take a look. Okay, boss. Joker had never learned to fear man, but he had a cat's inborn hatred for dogs. Okay, Tanner, go get him. In the first surge of panic, Joker thought only of escape. Then a stronger instinct took over and turned him back. Chibi had grown up in the wild. She knew that was the sound of trouble and she moved the youngsters inside and out of sight. That up, boy. He's got his trail now, I think. Joker sensed that some way, he must turn the danger away from the den. Come on, boy. It was almost too late. Nothing to do now but offer himself as a decoy. Well, he had the chase going his way all right. Now to tangle his trail in a maze of rocks. Joker took about three Chris's and a couple of crosses and went right on out the other side. It was a neat trick, but it didn't fool old Tanner. The other hounds heard Tanner's battle cry. When these reinforcements arrived, there wouldn't be a ghost of a chance for Joker. Now, 
an opening. Joker had about one good burst of speed left. Push him out on your side, take a shot at him. All right. Give me the canteen and get going. Come on, Pepper. Thunder. The hunters had a good plan, except for one thing. Joker had doubled back. Down the same side had come up, and that brought him out not far from the road. Something vaguely familiar and half-remembered drew Joker toward the truck. distinctly doggy, especially close to the floor. Well, he'd just have to turn strap hanger. Didn't seem to be a way to get out anyway. finally solved Joker's double back tactics and were hot on the new trail when it suddenly vanished. Sounded like those crazy hounds were back at the very spot he'd just left. Well, if the chase was on again, might as well turn around and go back. But not with Joker aboard. Joker was safe and sound now and heading for home. Kind of a happy ending for the craziest ocelot hunt that ever happened. sensed that the Rimrock country was a place of danger now. They would have to seek a safer, more bountiful territory. This time, Joker led the way for his family. The wandering search for a new home and hunting ground spanned many days and many miles. And perhaps it was fate that set the course and also set the stage for the final scene in an unfinished drama. Joker turned aside. It was a response to a conditioned reflex, established a long time ago in a long forgotten place. 
In the old circle of acquaintances, though, it seems things were about the same. Joker felt a growing sense of familiarity. But there had been some changes at the summit. A new motel building on the bluff. Painting, planting, and general remodeling. But the most important addition was Mrs. Jim Benton. Now the full return of memory. Joker! What's the matter? There's an awful out front. I think it might be Joker. Joker? See up there on the hill. Doesn't that look like him? Has to be. Joker? Come on, boy. Come on. Maybe he's hungry. Look at that, would you? No, I don't think we'd better feed him. He just might stay. He's got a few responsibilities of his own now. He belongs with them. Go on, boy. Go on back to your family. Go on now. The old ties were strong, but the new were stronger. The last bond with the man had been broken. Joker would never return. Nancy, remember when we turned Joker loose? Yes. I didn't think he'd make it. But he did. Yes, Jim. And so Jim and Joker had found their rightful places, each in his own world. For Mr. and Mrs. Jim Benton, there was all the bright promise of the future. And for the ocelots, the whole wide wilderness, where they would be free to continue their kind, as nature had intended they should from the very beginning.